In this video, I'm going to be teaching you about the MS hug. We'll discuss what causes MS hug, what are typical presentations clinically of the MS hug, how sometimes it's confused with other entities like heart attack, and lastly, I'll share with you several ways that we can treat this awful syndrome. If you're looking for answers about MS hug, tune in because I'm going to start explaining them to you right now. Howdy! Learn about multiple sclerosis with me, Aaron Boster. I started to make these MS educational videos to help my own MS clinic patients in between their clinic visits. It's my hope that I can help teach you as well. In this video, we're going to be discussing a common and unique pain syndrome associated with multiple sclerosis called the MS hug. It's my hope that with this video, I can help you learn what you need to know and empower you to better understand MS hug and how to fight it. If you're someone impacted by multiple sclerosis and you wanna up your MS game, make sure to subscribe to this channel right now. Also, please click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming educational content. Let's start by discussing the pathophysiology or the underlying cause of MS hug. Oftentimes it has to deal with damage caused to the spinal cord. Remember that the spinal cord is the superhighway that takes all the information from the brain down to the feet and then back up. And damage along that superhighway can cause all kinds of different symptoms. Now, damage to a certain part of the spinal cord can cause a short circuit, if you will, and it can stimulate the nerves leaving the spinal cord that go to the intercostal muscles. Intercostal muscles are the muscles in between ribs. Uh, without sounding gross, if you enjoy eating ribs, you're eating another animal's intercostal muscles. So now, if the spinal cord inappropriately stimulates those muscles, it can cause them to clamp down and contract. And so all along in between two ribs, you can have muscles that clamp down and spasm or contract. Clinically, that oftentimes is described as having a lasso tied around your chest being pulled tight or being squeezed like in a vise or being hugged by a giant. It's not a nice hug. The symptoms can occur constantly or they can occur intermittently. And oftentimes, well-intending clinicians misinterpret them and think that the person's having cardiac chest pain or lung problems like a pulmonary embolism or a cracked rib or something like that. We have to keep in mind if the patient has multiple sclerosis, this could in fact be MS hug. So what could we do about MS hug? Well, first off, we want to make sure that we're not missing a heart attack or a pulmonary embolism or something else. And so that involves good clinical medicine, taking a proper history and examining the patient, and if necessary, doing tests like EKG. Once we feel confident that we're not dealing with one of those pathologies, and we're concerned that this is in fact MS hug, we oftentimes can use medicines off-label to try to help make it better. Now, as you know with all of my videos, I'm not giving you medical advice, I'm giving you medical education. And so as I talk about these medicines, it's not so you can then go take them. It's to teach you about them and allow you then to talk to your own clinician so that you can make the right decision for you with your team. So many different medicines have been shown to help MS hug. And the common thread for most of these medicines is they calm down excited membranes. Remember that we believe the spinal cord is sending false information, causing those intercostal muscles to contract. And so if we can calm that area in the spinal cord, then we can relax the system and the MS hug will dissipate. And so medicines that were typically intended to treat seizures tend to work very well for treating MS hug. The so-called drug of choice is one of these seizure medicines called carbamazepine or Tegretol. Although in my clinical practice, I found that many different anti-epileptic medications can help with this. Another option is to consider using a central acting muscle relaxant like baclofen. All of these medications, of course, can cause side effects. And so with any of them, we have to weigh the risk benefit of controlling the discomfort and pain and causing side effects that you don't want. A third option, which is pretty awesome, is to do Botox along the intercostal muscles. This won't prevent the spinal cord from sending false messages, but it will prevent those muscles from being able to contract and as such decrease and diminish the pain. There you have it. A quick didactic on a unique pain syndrome and multiple sclerosis. MS hug. In brief, it's caused by damage from the spinal cord, sending false messages to the nerves that control the muscles between the ribs. Those muscles contract and cause a horrible squeezing sensation. This symptom can often be misunderstood and thought to be something like cardiac chest pain. 
and we have to obviously rule that out. And we can treat MS Hug using medicines off-label, such as anti-seizure medicines. Thank you for tuning in to this quick educational video. If you found it helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel right now. And now a question for you. If you've experienced MS Hug, how would you best describe it to someone else? Would you describe it as being squeezed? Would you describe it as a lasso around you being pulled tight? Share with us in the comments below the best description that you have for the sensation. I'd also like to ask, if you've been successfully treated for MS Hug, what was the successful treatment? Share with me in the comments below. Until next time, thanks for learning with me, Aaron Boster, and tune in to our next educational video.